I got number 27 calf tag. That was our, I believe, 19th calf. No, 18th calf tag. So we are over half done. Hello everyone and welcome to Peterson Family Farm. Uh, remember to click like and click subscribe. Uh, we've got two YouTube, YouTube, we've got two YouTube channels now. We've got the entertaining uh, YouTube channel with the music videos and then we've got this YouTube channel for our uh, educational vlog content. Today we're going to be talking about cows and calves and how that works here on our farm. So uh, we're not as closely managing uh, the calving as some people are who move them into barns and and then kind of individually uh, weigh them and, and do all these kind of tests and just manage them uh, so closely. We let them calve in the open and pretty much all I do is I go and I tag it and then I move it from the calving pen to the open area. It's just, it's just less intense that way. All right, this calf was born a few hours ago. My dad watched it. Uh, it's first, I think he saw it within an hour of it being born. He told me it was a bull. And he said it was number 35. So here I am. I got number 35. I'm just going to keep the calf right between me. Keep the calf between me and the mom. I got it. It's kind of awkward. I was holding the camera with the wrong hand. All right, I'll leave you alone now. You guys can go back to bonding. It has one other pin mate up there. It's our uh, another red calf that we have. We have two red calves. That's the uh, Hereford genetics in them. And then all the other calves are all turned out. Look at all them. They got that whole wheat, wheat pasture out there to graze on and a pond so we don't have to haul water to them anymore. If we can see that one calf isn't milking or isn't, you know, if they're not attaching as a pair, then we separate them and we put them in a small pen. Right now we have three of them in a small pen where I'm putting the cow through the chute and teaching that calf how to milk and making sure they are connected in that way. These two cows are in here because the one cow isn't producing enough milk and so the calf has shrunk sides. The other cow is has a good sized udder but the calf isn't uh, latching on through the day and so I have to lock them both in the head gate chute in order for them to uh, be healthy calf. Got them in the chute here. So this is the calf that goes with it. You can see 20. Come on, buddy. So I come in here and I clean off the udder a little bit. She's kind of nibbling on you there. Yeah. Oh, she's hungry. We gotta figure this out, calf. And the cow has to kind of let down her milk. Think it's drinking? I think there's noise. Huh? See, she's just not getting enough at all. There's a whole gap there where it should be full of milk. Do better. This one is a little bit better but she still bellers every now and then saying, give me more milk, mama. 
So what happens uh, if these cows aren't able to raise very good calves? If these two calves aren't able to make it the rest of the time and wean, you know, up there with the, wean the same size calf as the other cows, then they'll probably be cold. And uh, sold as either bred cows if they breed back or open cows if we have to separate them off early. Cold just means sold to the sale barn as uh, animals to be fed out instead of to be bred back. I'm gonna take the milk that I milked out of the cow and take it out to the calf and get it to drink just out of the bottle. And you guys are gonna see through this little device. All right, the calf. The calf we are looking for is number 15. Where are you, 15? Oh, there it is. I don't have any food, 36. I don't have any food for you, so it's not going to do you any good to sniff me. We'll put those cows out there so they don't cause, we'll just leave them out there because so they don't cause a commotion. Here, buddy. Gonna straddle the calf. Here, buddy. We just have them in this little shed separate from the rest of the herd because they're not, uh... wow, this calf, this is the best it's ever drank. We have them in the shed separate so that uh, we can watch them closely and make sure they're pairing up and um, learning to drink. I wish I could get it to drink from the udder of the cow this much, but the cow doesn't really stand still very long. And um, the cow's got a massive udder, and so she doesn't. She's not really the best. This calf is super tall, and the cow's udder hangs down really low and it doesn't really do a very good job finding the udder. Almost done, buddy. Oh, don't back up on me. See, I was, I was relaxed. I didn't have it trapped between my legs because it was just standing there drinking and then I let it out. Reminds me of my 4-H days when I had a bucket calf and uh, bottled it, but it was way less stressful than this because I wasn't trying to get the bottle calf to go back to its mom. This calf, I'm trying to get back to its mom. So it's not really that beneficial to get it to drink out of just the bottle. I want it to get all the way back to drinking from its mom's udder. Just finish off the bottle, 15. You got it. You're spilling so much. This is exactly what he did last time at the end of the bottle. He just stopped trying so hard. Keep telling my wife I'm like a dairy farmer coming out here to milk the cow and getting them to pair up. Here's the two mamas waiting, saying, what are you doing in there? It's my job to protect that thing. This one does a decent job of protecting the calf, but not very good job at feeding it. See how huge that udder is over there. It's not really the best. It's good because it means lots of milk production, but if the calf can't find the milk and latch on, then it doesn't do any good. All right, I'll leave you guys alone. I'll take this with me. Fill it up with silage or something. Let's dump back in that, that bunk over there. It's kind of fun to do that job once and work with the little calves, but it's really annoying to have to do it um, and have to deal with the cows and the shoot and other things multiple times. So you wouldn't want to do it on a very high percentage of your calves of your cow herd because it means that the calf isn't just finding the butter and the teat right away and uh, doing its job you have to teach it how to do its job. So it's a lot less labor and less stress on the pair if it just figures it out itself. Hope is that uh, they're just born naturally. Uh, we can match them up as a pair, put the tag on, and then they won't have to be messed with. 
until it's time to vaccinate them right before we take them out to pasture in the later part of the spring in mid-April. So what are some of the main challenges um, that you face during calving? Um, mud for calving in March is pretty much um, the main issue. I mean, just normal things about a cow not really liking when you're coming too close to the calf is a it's a danger but if you if you have a plan to exit the pen or have a plan of keeping the calf between you and the mom it's fairly safe um i have i've been charged once this year but they didn't get me so i mean it's fine i made it over the fence there's a lot of challenges that can happen with the actual calving process but the majority of those i think happen with heifers uh we have like four and five year old cows that we we purchased and so uh, they're going to have less calving difficulties than the heifers because their frame, the heifer's frame isn't built as big. They might have uh, more issues, but um, we, we just kind of are patient with them. And then if they need us to intervene, we usually call the vet because uh, we're not very uh, trained. Uh, some, some ranchers out there are really good at intervening and, and doing what's best for the cow. We'll pretty much call the vet if we think there's an issue. Last year, we called the vet on two, uh, two calving um, issues and he was able to keep the calf alive so but this year we we've had uh, we've had good I watched one happen the rest of them have all happened uh, when I had my back turned it wasn't looking at the pen oh they popped out the other side look at them playing so I just removed this electric fence you can see right where they've grubbed down that side and they haven't touched this side right down that line and I'm trying to call them across boss boss oh, I think I've got a leader to try it they're really nervous to cross where that line was boss oh she's getting a taste Open up into some new wheat grazing paddock. They like this a lot more than what they've just grubbed down. This one is trying to learn how to eat grass, but mainly he just puts his mouth on it. Oh, retreat back to mom. 